it actually stacked on top of it. So we can see, wait a minute, you mean this is the total of the quantity served plus the quantity consumed? Yes. For every single distributor? Yes. That is known as a dynamic calculation right there within a report. In SSRS, this, um, this would have required a long written expression to be, a, well, not a long expression, but it would have required an expression nevertheless. And to be able to do it dynamically would have required um, an action and would have required, you know, typically some pretty good, pretty hard reporting skills. Here, the user just has to check it. Check, check, and it automatically adds it. Really sweet, as you guys can tell. And you see, that's the meaning of self-service BI, the fact that you don't have to define all this stuff at the very beginning, you can choose as you go along through this intuitive clicking and um, through this intuitive clicking mechanism. So this is definitely pretty nice over here. Okay, now this is getting pretty nice right over there. We've got it actually stacking and you name it. Um, let's see what else we can do though to make this even better. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come down and let's actually sort these values of the chart. What, you mean we can sort dynamically too? Oh yes, yes we can. We can sort these charts dynamically. And in Report Builder, when I was showing those tutorials, there was no such thing as sorting a chart, um, sort, having a user have the option to sort a chart right there in the middle of an actual, you know, right there in the middle of a report or something. But let's see how we do that. So come back over here. And you guys can see over here, there's our sort right over there. And as you move this down, as you move this, move this, move this around, what I want you guys to see over here is this. Let me just move this back over here, move it up. There we go. Now there's a sort by distributors right over here and just click the ASC and look at that. Sorts it by descending, sorts it descending right over here. Maybe you want to change it to not sort by just distributors because distributors is just some def definition, right? So it's doing alphabetical order. But instead, let's say sort by the sum of the quantity served. So you want to see which one is actually by quantity, sum of quantity served. There we go and then descending from the greatest quantity served, right, to the least quantity served. And you guys can see quantity served is in blue, so it just starts going down, 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 down. You mean, you mean what you can do now is you can actually turn around and actually sort it this sort of way to where, you know, you actually get a true sort right on the fly almost? Yes, well, it is on the fly. Yes, very helpful for a chart. Very nice, very simple type of mechanism. So excellent, excellent. All right, now even go further over here. Um, so we've got all this, we've got all this down. Now let's come back and click on this. And then let's click on the layout tab and let's do something else over here. Let's actually add a legend. So click on legend and then click on show legend at the bottom. There. So we moved the legend, which was originally over here to at the bottom, right over here. So now our legend appears at the bottom, making our chart wider and giving us more space. So this is extremely helpful, definitely. So now we've actually got a legend at the bottom over there. So this is starting to really work out pretty nicely. Okay, now we've got all of that done over there, but there is one thing though. You see how we stack this on top of each other? What if we didn't want to stack this? What if we actually wanted quantity consumed to be on the right instead of actually appearing on the top? So I'm gonna click on design. And instead of doing that, is there another type of visualization that takes care of it? See all these cool visualizations that are available like maps and whatever else as you guys can see? These things are really sweet. So instead, I'm gonna click on cluster, column, and watch this. Now cluster column allows me to have multiple different measures displayed inside of the values as you guys can see. Now look at that right over there. That is very nice. So there we go, we've, just, we've actually just made a chart that we've actually sorted by the sum of the quantity served. Sweet, really, really sweet, as you guys can tell. Okay, we're starting to rock now, so let's continue through this tutorial. So we've got the sum of the quantity served now, we've got this chart out, and this is, this is really sweet, and, it, and this is really sort of embodying what I was talking about with self-service BI. The fact that we can do so many things, and you guys can see that by being able to choose these measures, by being able to pass them in, and by being able to just click options, literally like cluster, bar, you name it, whatever else, you can instantly render any one of hundreds of reports off of this quite easily. I mean, those are your options. And this is what, this is what we're talking about for being able to get information on demand so that organizations can make quick and meaningful decisions when they need to, rather than having to wait. Okay, now here's picnic items right over here. Okay, now what if we wanted to use something else as kind of like our little legend, a little label type thing? What if we wanted to use another chart? We could, we could do that. So on this next one, watch what I'm gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand this to make this bigger. 
There we go. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. There we go, just like that. Now I'm going to take this sum of quantity served over here and I'm going to drag it. Whoops, got to get my hand, got to get that hand symbol. Right there. And I'm going to drag it to the report right over here and I'm going to put it wherever I want to in this particular case. So say I choose to put it up here, kind of where they put it, right there, you name it. Say I put it right over there, I'll put it right here next to it and see how they kind of put it next to the title. Um, tacky, but oh well, let's go with it. <laughs> there we go. There's the sum right over there and you guys can kind of see it coming through. It looks, looks very, very tacky actually. Probably would have started it right underneath here, but we'll leave it like that just for a moment. Um, and then as we finish bringing this little sum over here just like that, you guys can see there's beverages, fruits, whatever else, and we put it next to the title part, that's going to now that's now going to bring our second chart inside of this. So now we've got a chart that's an actual label. Now, yes, it's a little tacky where they chose to place it, but there is something that is pretty cool, though. The fact that we can use another chart inside of a chart. See how we were able to drag that in? That looks like another chart literally right inside of that chart. So many times our users will want to see two charts combined or three charts. In SSRS, this was nearly impossible to do in many cases. I mean, difficult, difficult inside the traditional type of reporting that we had, even with Report Builder. Here, it was as easy as just doing a drag or drop. That is a game changer, guys. Definitely a game changer because now we can, we can create robust charts that are combinations. Sweet. Okay, let's go a little bit further over here. So we've got all that. Oh, one more thing you want to do too. When you finish and you get it all done, right, right or you name it, to make sure that this actually stands out by default, um, if you click on it right over here, you can click on Bring Forward and that makes sure that it's the top or click on the second chart by clicking off of that and click on send backward. And that then makes sure that this one stands out as the main chart, essentially. This one over here stands out as the second chart stands out so people can see it quite clearly. Okay, now we're getting a little bit further, so, but let's see some other cool little tricks. All right, in this next one, we're gonna create something called slicers. Slicers came out in 2010 and oh, did they take off. Why? Because they were significant, they were game changer. What you could do now is you could turn around and you could do this dynamic parameter filtering, which I can tell you in the past was a nightmare to implement. Um, I remember here getting cases where I would have users say, okay, I want to be able to choose one of 30 parameters. And if it chooses this, I want to be able to choose one. Of, I want to be able to dynamically choose this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter. And the only way you could really do that was with dynamic SQL and through some real nice, through some real funny little tricks um, through, you know, through SQL Server or by using stored procedures with real funny tricks. And it required a lot of code and a lot of work. And I mean, weeks of development time with this, we can do it in we can do it not in weeks, but we can actually do it in minutes. <laughs> and I really mean minutes, literally, it's that much of an advantage. So first, let me just clear a little bit of space here, make this a little bit smaller again. For now, there we go, there we go, there we go. Making this small, I'm clearing some more space because I'm about to add more here. Bring that up just like that. Then let me take this little part again. Hand symbol, remember, bring it up as much as I can. There we go. And aligning is still something they need to work on, definitely to make that a little bit more friendly, but all things, all things said, um, it's still, it's still quite an improvement over previous times to be able to have this mechanism. But there's some there's some things they need to work on definitely. Um, the feel is quite not is not all the way quite there yet as far as on being able to make clear lines and delineations. Having these faint lines is considered a design best practice, um, design worst practice. But that being said, though, still as long as you thumb around and drag and drop, you can get these charts inside the charts. Okay, now come back over here for me, and oh, here comes our next part. Click the blank area, because we're about to create a new visualization. See, we don't have to do list anymore like we did with SSRS Report Builder. Now we can just turn around straight up and start, you know, click the blank area and then choose whatever we want. Okay, now once we're inside of that blank area right over there, so we're in the blank part right over here, um, come back to the items table right over there. And this time in the items table, let's choose category drawing. Check. And here we go. So interesting, very interesting. We've got these, we've got these pictures now, right? And these pictures that are coming over here are interesting. Now when we click on it, nothing happens initially. Wait, that's not working. Okay, 
The reason why nothing happened is because of the fact that this was a slicer. And look in, over here in visualizations. In visualizations, we have tables defined, right, and whatever else, but um, that's not where we need to go. Come over here to slicer instead now with this region clicked, so make sure that you're clearly on this region, and now click on slicer. Oh, now it's something that's different. Let me show you. Let me move this over first to the left, just like that. There's category drawing. And now it is a slicer. This means that this is actually the equivalent of a filter, which means that we can use this to be able to be able to filter our data. So, for example, say I move the data over here and I want to see data just for this um, or, or for fruits. Let me click on fruits. And look how the data just automatically changed. That's the power of PowerView. That's the power of dynamic BI right over there. But wait a minute. Okay, so this is a pretty cool concept. Slicers are these are these dynamic filters. Cool. But you know what? Can we have even more slicers? Yes, we can. And guess what? The slicers are going to have values dependent upon the other slicers that you chose first. So like if you chose this first, the next slicer would then respect those values. Let me show you what I mean by that. So there's category drawing over there. And we can see that for category drawing, you can see what happened with health activity store, you name it. Let me come up over here and clear the slicer by, by handling this little button right over here. So I'll clear filter, clear filter, sorry. And now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come back and I'm going to create a second slicer.